Good. Good evening, everyone. We'll call to order the August 1st, 2019 regular meeting for the City of Santa Cruz Planning Commission. Uh, I'll ask for a roll call, please. Commissioner Schifrin? Here. Conway? Here. Spellman? Nielsen? Here. Greenberg? Here. Singleton? Here. Chair Pepping? Present. And Vice Chair Spellman is absent with notification. Are there any statements of disqualification for tonight's items? Yes, I'll be accruing myself from item number three um, due to my involvement in the business council. And I will um, conflict item number three as well due to um, my employer receiving financial support donations from both the appellant and the appellant. So in my absence and the vice chair, then Commissioner Conway will chair the meeting as immediate past chair. Are there any oral communications? And um, for members of the public, oral communications is the segment of, this, of the meeting where we invite people from the public to address the commission on anything that is pertinent for our business, but, it, but which is not agendized for tonight. So for the two items on our general, on our public hearing agenda, we'll invite you to come up and speak to us. But if there's anything you'd like to address to us that is our business, but not on the agenda tonight, now's the time to do that. Please come forward if you'd like to do that. Seeing none, we'll move to approval of the minutes. Uh, we'll invite uh, a motion to approve the June 6th meeting minutes. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Passes unanimously, no abstention. So we move on to a public hearing. The first matter is 914 Mission Street. I understand from staff that this was intended to be a consent agenda item. But it's agendized as a, a public hearing. So rather than inviting staff to do a um, formal presentation, um, we can expedite things a little bit. I think, um, Ryan, you don't have any presentation beyond the staff report. It stands on its own, correct? I have a presentation prepared, but um, again, I would see if anyone wanted to speak to it. Right. Had any issues with it? I, okay. So I can go either way. So we'll, um, we'll skip the staff presentation because I think the staff report is concise and well written. We'll go straight to commissioners that have questions before we go to public comment. Any questions for staff before public comment? So for this item, please come forward if you'd like to address the commission. We'll open the public hearing for 914 Mission Street. Looks like maybe everyone's here for item number three. Would anyone like to speak to the commission on item number two? Okay, so we'll close the public hearing, come back to the commission for a discussion or a Move motion. Move staff recommendation. Move the staff recommendation. Second. Seconded by Commissioner Singleton. All in favor? Aye. 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 The passage unanimously, no abstentions. And we can move on to number three. So Commissioner Singleton and myself will be excused and the presiding officer will be Commissioner Conway. Good evening with this that fast change of plans and seating. Um, we will take up item number three on 110 Cooper Street. We'll start with the staff presentation. Thank you. Good evening. Okay, so um, this is an appeal of an administrative use permit to establish a medical center at 110 Cooper Street. Uh, the administrative use permit was approved by the zoning administrator on April 3rd of 2019. We received an appeal, I'm sorry, oh, that's right, April 3rd, and then we received an appeal on April 15th. Um, the appeal hearing was originally scheduled for June 6th, and it was continued to today. This is the location of the um, proposed medical center. This is for Kaiser Permanente. Um, it's at the corner of Cooper Street and Pacific Avenue. It's in the Central Business District Zone District. The general plan designation is Regional Visitor Commercial, um, which provides for a mixture of uses that serve residents and visitors. Um, the site is located in the Pacific Avenue Retail District of the Downtown Plan. 
This plan allows the establishment of a medical center on an upper floor of a building in the Pacific Avenue Retail District with approval of an administrative use permit. So here we have a floor plan of the proposed medical offices. The total square footage is 21,641 square feet. It includes the entire fifth floor and part of the second floor. Um, they will have up to 42 staff members and 45 patients in the facility at any given time. The proposed hours of operation are, um, I believe, Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. The site is located in the downtown parking district. This means that on-site parking is not required, but the applicant will need to pay a parking in lieu fee um, prior to the building permit issuance for their tenant improvement. Um, at the request of the Public Works Department, we have modified the wording of condition number 10 since the zoning administrator hearing um, in order to accurately describe the name of this um, in lieu fee and the time at which it is due. Um, so the fifth floor will provide 13 provider offices, 22 exam rooms for by appointment visits, um, a conference room, a reception area, a waiting room, lactation room, and administrative space. Here we have this um, part of the second floor that Kaiser will be, um, uh, they've applied to take over. Um, product Ops, um, which is the company that um, Bob Cagle, the opponent, is the CEO of, they are also on the second floor of this building. Um, so the second floor of Kaiser will include a clinical lab, a small pharmacy, a radiology department, a conference room, a reception area, staff break room, and administrative space. Um, this floor plan was approved by the zoning administrator. Um, staff is aware that the applicant, the appellant, and the landlord have been um, in negotiations that could involve moving Kaiser or product ops to different floors within the building from what was originally approved. The downtown plan allows a medical center on any upper floor in the Pacific Avenue Retail District, and it also allows um, an office use on any of the upper floors. Um, so therefore, we're proposing to modify condition of approval number six to allow Kaiser to be on a different upper floor than that originally approved by the zoning administrator, as long as the total square footage of their space is not greater than that was, that was originally approved. Okay, so finding number one of an administrative use permit requires the use to be um, in line with the general plan and also the downtown plan. The project is consistent with several general plan policies. Um, land use policy 4.2 encourages uses that reduce the need for automobiles. Because the facility is going to be located in the most densely built area of the cities, um, Kaiser is going to have a higher proportion of patients probably walking or using public transportation um, from nearby residences or places of work as opposed to um, if the facility was located in a less densely built area, there would probably be, in that case, there would be more or greater proportion of their patients driving to the site. And so in that way, we feel that um, this location does reduce the need for automobiles. Um, land use policy 4.3 encourages the development and expansion of neighborhood commercial services. Um, the downtown neighborhood is currently underserved when it comes to a medical center. Um, so this can provide an essential neighborhood service for downtown businesses and residents. Um, land use policy 4.3.1 seeks to identify areas to allow or expand existing neighborhood facilities within easy walking distance of residential areas or those well served by transit. Um, so the proposed center at this location is within walking distance of the metro station um, and also many downtown residential units. Um, for example, the units at 2030 North Pacific Avenue, um, 555 Pacific Avenue, and then the new Park Pacific uh, units that are under construction right now at 1547 Pacific just up the street. So the downtown plan requires medical centers located on an upper floor to be compatible with existing and planned 
lower and upper floor uses. As described in the staff report, we feel that this use is compatible um, with the nearby retail um, office and restaurant uses. Okay, so I'll talk a little bit about the appeal. Um, the appeal letter was submitted by Bob Cagle, who's the CEO of Product Ops and Incorporated. Um, the letter focused mainly on the project's consistency with general plan policy um, land use 4.2, um, which encourages uses that reduce the need for automobiles. The letter asserts that the project is not consistent with this policy because it will generate a large number of visitors that will drive to the facility rather than by walking. Um, I agree that this will probably happen. Um, a medical facility will create a lot of people driving to the downtown. However, as I described earlier, the proportion of patients coming to the facility um, that are that can walk there or take public transit there is greater than the proportion that would be able to do that if the facility was located somewhere else in Santa Cruz. Um, the appellant argues that there will be an increase in the number of people visiting the building. Um, I agree this is true because the building is currently not rented to its capacity. Um, Kaiser will be taking over a portion of the building that is currently vacant. Um, utilizing buildings to their capacity and bringing more people to the downtown area actually is in line with the downtown plan, which seeks to create a vibrant mixed use neighborhood that increases pedestrian activity. The appellant also ex expressed a concern about double parking outside the building that um, would result from cars coming and dropping off or picking up patients. Um, this concern was also brought up at the zoning administrator hearing. Um, in response, the zoning administrator did add a condition of approval for the applicant to coordinate with Public Works to determine if creation of a designated patient pickup and drop off space was possible. Um, the Public Works Department has since confirmed that it is possible to create such a space. Um, it, the, uh, Kaiser would need to go through an appealable public process to have such a space approved. Um, however, we also consulted with the Economic Development Department and they expressed concerns that designating a space specifically for Kaiser um, would take that parking space away from other nearby businesses and therefore could create a situation that's not inclusive and fair for all the businesses in that area. Um, so in order to balance the staff concerns from and opinions from different departments, um, I'm proposing to delete this condition of approval. Um, so the applicant would not be required to apply for a designated pick up drop off space, but they also would not be prohibited um, if they felt that that would be necessary for their business um, or should they be interested in doing so. The appeal letter also asserts that ADA access will be blocked during the closures of Cooper Street for special events. The senior plans examiner who reviewed the plans um, on our staff and who also has an expertise in accessibility requirements indicated that closure of the street does not close the sidewalk and it therefore does not affect ADA access to the building. Um, finally, the appeal expressed a concern that having Kaiser as a tenant in the building will affect the image of a prestigious office space for product ops and a concern that sharing an HVAC system with Kaiser will result in the transfer of germs from sick patients to product ops employees. Um, we consider these concerns to be more um, leaning more towards a private landlord tenant issue on the spectrum between like a public nuisance versus a private issue. Um, however, um, we would certainly be supportive of um, measures that would could be taken um, within the building to help attenuate any potential spread of germs between business spaces. Um, we're definitely sympathetic towards that. Um, so in conclusion, um, we feel that the project does meet the findings of an administrative use permit. Um, staff recommends that the Planning Commission deny the appeal and uphold the Zoning Administrator's approval of the administrative use permit with the proposed modified conditions. 
Um, as of Thursday afternoon, we received 17 letters um, of public comment from 16 people, including um, one from the appellant. Um, of the 17 letters, three were for and 14 were against the project. Uh, the major theme of concerns in the letters included traffic, um, parking, and locating the business at a busy part uh, of the downtown where public events are held. This concludes my presentation and I'm available for any questions. Thank you. Are there any questions from commissioners of staff at this time? I have a yep. question. Um, is, are, is there anybody here that, that can speak to the parking district and how that works? I mean, are you able to, to explain I, some of that to us? Or? It might be. <laughs> I talked with Public Works a little bit about it. Did, do you have a specific question about it? Um, I think the the question I have it just with the with the public concern around um, about the parking um, I, th there's just been comments around um, the retailers losing parking um, because of a, a use like this coming into the parking district so is that uh, is that true or is that not I mean what are the details around um, the parking that's available in the parking district and um, is there a surplus or is there not? I, I don't know the answer to the specifically the availability in the parking district. Um, I did get some calculations from um, our transportation manager about um, the way they would basically calculate the parking requirement for this space. Um, they're considering it uh, the previous use as office space which would have a parking requirement or what they call a parking deficiency of 55 spaces. Um, and based on information that um, Kaiser gave them on the number of, of practitioners, in the downtown area, the parking requirement for um, a medical office is based on the number of practitioners. So based on the numbers that Kaiser gave them, it would um, have um, a 30 space a uh, more intensive parking requirement than an office space. And then what they would do is they would just um, charge an in-lieu fee that is for those 30 spaces. Um, but I can't speak to the number of spaces that are available. I don't know that answer. So the parking deficit for an office space would be 55, is that what you said? Mm -hmm. and, then it is, and then are we, and then it's an additional 30 plus spaces on top of that is, are we talking about that's what the that's what the total deficient load is? Right, and I think the reason why we say deficient is because there's no on-site parking; it's just a Understood. building. Um, so the the Kaiser use would have a requirement of 85 spaces, um, and that's based off of 17 practitioners, um, whereas an office use would be 55 spaces. So they would be charged an in lieu fee for the difference of those extra 30 spaces. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. A, no other questions? I was just quickly reviewing the order of business in the case of an appeal. Um, uh, both the applicant and the appellant have an opportunity to address the commission prior to the public hearing. Um, I'm not finding that they go in any particular order. Um, for that reason, I'm going to invite the appellant to make any statements he may want to make to the commission. Hi, I'm uh, Bob Cagle, and I'm the co-founder of Product Ops, and I'd be across the hall from the proposed clinic. So uh, Product Ops is 10 years old, but our roots go back 30 years uh, in this community. Like you, we care very deeply about the community, and um, thank you for taking the time this evening to hear out my appeal and my responses to staff. Um, I come here to speak thoughtfully about the future of Santa Cruz. We've given this considerable thought and we've spoken to some consultants and we, as well to our downtown neighbors. I'm asking you reject this permit because it'll cause unique disruptions to traffic and to parking and to uh, downtown retail neighbors. Um, in addition to the appeal filed on April 15th, I explained my concerns in more detail on May 29th. If you have that, you might wanna look into that. It goes into a lot more detail than we have time for tonight. Uh, first, traffic. 
uh, I know everyone's tired of hearing about this, but this will mean constant disruptive traffic downtown. Both the applicant and the staff both agree that staff's response predicts about 45 trips an hour, just below the number that would have required a traffic study. Uh, one consultant I spoke to put the number closer to 52, and another one put it at 58. That's hundreds of new trips per day. Uh, staff dismissed this increase essentially uh, as a clinic elsewhere would create uh, even more traffic, but that's really beside the point. Downtown streets in general, uh, some of them being one way, and Cooper Street in particular, are uniquely unsuited to thousands of new auto trips uh, per month, uh, some calculate as high as 12,000. Uh, tra traditional offices are four to 10 an hour, uh, which is a fraction of the traffic that a clinic will generate. And with no traffic study, we won't know until it's too late. So that's the first reason uh, to say no. Uh, parking, we've talked a bit about that. Uh, I know you're tired of it too. But anywhere else in Santa Cruz, uh, this would have to provide 100 new, 108 new parking spaces. So I have different data than what staff had. Instead, we'll have to find out those, those new spaces either on the streets or in the lots. Can we find that? Maybe. But the closest lots are usually full by 10 AM. City data shows that Locust and Cedar are filled up almost every week beyond capacity. Uh, SoCal is often more, more than 90% capacity. But remember, these aren't commuters. Um, these are people trying to get in and out of appointments and they're more likely to have children or caretakers or not feel well enough to uh, walk very far. So um, using alternative transport for a bus and the like that may not be possible for them. Uh, they may need accessible parking or a drop off. That means more traffic and more emissions uh, while people drive around looking for that ideal parking space, uh, especially when uh, the Cooper Street is closed, which it is about 20 days a year, including tomorrow, uh, which is every first Friday plus all their other events. So that's the second reason to say no. Uh, incompatible use. Finally, this is a uniquely disruptive um, to the businesses in the building. Staff explained why they believe this clinic fits downtown, but that doesn't mean it fits here. Uh, the downtown plan requires that administrative permits be compatible with existing uses, and we believe this is not. Technically, according to the downtown plan, you could put a daycare center across the hall from a brew pub, and I doubt very seriously whether that would be approved. Um, so uh, today, the upper floors of 110 Cooper are uh, quiet, traditional offices. We can't speak for the other tenants in the building, but 40% of our employees use alternative transportation. Uh, and the traffic that we do generate is mostly uh, morning and evening commutes. It's also a very highly secure building, which, was, which we chose on purpose, uh, with key card access and limited lobby traffic. This permit would create a busy clinic with what I thought was 25 patient rooms plus a labs and uh, pharmacy. How long is an appointment? Maybe 20 minutes. Uh, that would mean a peak of about 75 patients an hour plus the traffic to the labs and the pharmacy. Patients won't have key cards, so the clinic uh, plans to install a, uh, a call button like in a big city apartment so a receptionist on the fifth floor can buzz people into the lobby, not necessarily know who they are, but along with their kids, their caretakers, and anyone else that might tailgate in, in and out all day long, wondering which floor their appointment might be on or where the bathrooms are or how to get to the pharmacy. This is obviously disrupted to the existing uses and it sets a terrible precedent. This is the kind of constant traffic uh, that why most Kaiser clinics are in most clinics in general are in dedicated buildings. And if the tenants decide to move out, uh, the precedent set here that it makes it easy for the clinic to expand into the remaining empty suites or even take over the building. And do we really want a four-story medical tower in the center of our, our community center? So Cooper Street is special, and uh, we, the community, have invested heavily in it, most recently with a very successful MAW project. We should be very careful uh, about the uses we permit there, uh, and it should fit seamlessly into Cooper Street, not just downtown. Uh, this project will create excess traffic, monopolize the parking, and disrupt the existing businesses. So I urge you to reject this permit. I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Do commissioners have any questions of the appellant at this time? Seeing none, none. Um, thank you. Thank yes. you very much. Thank you. Um, I'd like to invite the applicant to address the commission. If you'd like. Good evening. My name is Sam Bajaj, and I'm the Chief Operating Officer for Kaiser Permanente Santa Cruz in San Jose. Um, and we appreciate the opportunity to be able to talk to you about our project today. Um, 
I think the, the one key fact to probably reinforce is we've already been in downtown Santa Cruz for two and a half years. We're at the Locust Street location uh, with five provider offices and have been serving the community for the past two and a half years. Our, our growth and unexpected growth actually uh, over the past couple of years has, is leading us to look for um, more space. So it's the demand from the, for medical services from local residents in the area surrounding neighborhoods is what's uh, driving this need. So I think when we look at a lot of these impacts, we have to look at as incremental in impacts versus total impacts, because some of these impacts are already included in, in the data that one would, one would pull today. Um, with each project, we thoroughly evaluate all our options. Uh, it takes us a while to do it. And um, with this specific project, we looked at real estate availability, we looked at timetables, we looked at our needs, and uh, we want you to know that we were very thoughtful in why we chose this, this site. And in fact, it was the only site that matched the criteria that we were looking for uh, in, the, in that area. Uh, we started in early 2018. We ended up having a letter of intent at the end of 2018. So it took us 12 months almost to locate a suitable site and it'll take us 18 months further to develop the site and have it be ready for, uh, for use, for the intended use. So we balance all these factors when we look at it, including the disruption to the community. Now, with regard to Mr. Cagle's objections, um, you know, we see his point, we do. And we've, uh, we've thoroughly looked at each and every objection. What I think I'd anchor back to is the presentation by staff, which I feel was very thorough and, and uh, well done and thoughtful. Um, rather than delving into each single one, I think I'd just refer it back to that and just say, we, at the end of the day, agree with the conclusion that they have reached, that it, th this particular uh, project is not only consistent with the central business zoning, it's also consistent with the general plan the downtown plan, and more importantly, provides much needed medical access in this particular area. There's a pent up demand for medical services in an area that's well suited with public transit, and one that is optimally located uh, to serve the needs of not just the downtown Santa Cruz area, but also the surrounding neighborhoods. You know, one thing as, a, as an employer, at healthcare generally used, is an anchor in any community. Um, so we take that very seriously. We've, we've been, you know, we're all over Northern California and we've been and once we get in a community, we stay. And our intent is to work with our neighbors because these end up being our members, our future members. And so we're very mindful of, again, like I said, the disruption, the ripples we cause when we enter a community. So we're very thoughtful in how we do it. So to that end, we have worked and we asked for a continuance from the last time to this, to this particular hearing. We have tried to work with uh, product ops to find a suitable solution in terms of relocating. Um, unfortunately, we were not able to come to a mutually acceptable conclusion, uh, which is what brings us here today. Um, I think the, it's important to note that we're, well, I would consider us a different kind of healthcare provider. If, if you've experienced Kaiser, you have family who's experienced Kaiser, you know friends and neighbors who've experienced Kaiser, our brand's wellness. And a lot of our work is around preventative services. So when we talk about people visiting the clinic, it's folks, you know, I think the image is portrayed around like, you've got people who've got infectious diseases showing up. This is not an urgent care clinic. This is not an ED, this is a primary care clinic. And Dr. Orndorff will talk a little bit more about the details, but I think it's important to understand that we also, in addition to uh, focusing on prevention, we have folks showing up for mammograms, diabetes uh, screening, flu shots, things like that. And at the same time, we also promote a lot of our technology, including virtual visits. So approximately 10% of our visits within Santa Cruz County uh, and about 30% in Kaiser Permanente overall are virtual visits. So this is where you don't even have to leave the comfort of your house. You do a video visit with your provider on your cell phone for ease of use. So um, I think in, in, in conclusion of my part, uh, I'd encourage you to review the application. I think it meets all the requirements. We're, we're committed to working with our neighbors. We're committed to working with the county to move this forward. 
Um, and we're happy to hear your thoughts and any questions you may have. I'm gonna turn it over to Dr. Orndorff. He can talk a little bit more about the operations. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you, commissioners, for hearing us out tonight. We really appreciate it. My name is Dr. Joyce Orndorff. I am an internist by trade. I am a primary care physician. I have been with Kaiser Santa Cruz since we came here in January of 2017. I am also a longtime community member. I have been in Santa Cruz for almost 30 years at this point. I wanted to talk a little bit about what a day to day, a day in the life of our clinic here in Santa Cruz at our Locust Street location. I went ahead and took a look at my schedule to give an accurate idea of what's been going on. Yesterday I saw, quote, saw 19 patients. Five of them were by telephone. Three of them were by video. Yes, I am. I play a doctor on TV. <laughs> and the rest of them, I had a number of, over 80% of them were well care visits, your routine physicals, people telling me that they're here because, well, I'm here for my physical, I'm here because my spouse made me, I'm here because I need to follow up on this lab, that lab, I want to know if I'm doing okay, I want to know if I'm healthy, how can I be better? And yes, there were a few sick people that I saw yesterday, two of them were back pains, one of them I saw by video. I, that's a day. I looked over at some of the other practitioners today. I went and looked at their schedules. Lots of well care visits. We actually see a number of patients from UC Santa Cruz, students, some summer students. They come in by bus and they're happy to not have to get into their car and drive to our Scotts Valley or a Watsonville clinic to be able to get care for their well care or for their anxiety or for their women's check, birth control, et cetera. We are a primary care clinic. Our brand is wellness and prevention. We, we're not an urgent care. We're not walk-ins. We're not sick people coming in. We're not an emergency room, as Sam so said. We focus on wellness. We focus on prevention. We focus on elevating the health of this community. And I'm proud to be part of <laughs> Kaiser Permanente downtown here doing this work. It's wonderful. I'm happy to answer questions, concerns that you may have with regards to the day-to-day -day traffic, the day-to-day -day type of cases that we see. I will mention, do we see sick people? Well, yes, we are a medical center. Is it the majority of our day-to-day? -day? No, not at all. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, are there any questions of the applicant by commissioners at this time? Yes. I've, I've got a couple. Um, this one's for Sam. Um, what other um, what other clinics? What other clinics do you have in urban areas? So we have a number of clinics in urban areas, depending on how you define urban. So I would have defined downtown Oakland as urban. Mm -hmm. Downtown San Francisco is urban. Um, so we've got a number of clinics in Sacramento, um, and, a, and and not just a clinic, but a number of them. So we have one in Mission Bay, one, uh, there's actually two off of Van Ness Avenue in San Francisco. So there's a variety of them. Well, uh, so your, your answer brought up another question. What would you consider this clinic then? It would, I mean, it, it, is it not an urban clinic then for you? Oh, we would, yeah, we'd consider it urban. Um, and in those other clinics you mentioned, would it, I mean, is there a, is there parking provided for those clinics it's, um, by it, the, I'm sorry, but sure by, um, but by your, your company? It's mixed. So in, in, in Oakland, because we just had a recent rebuild and because of the rules, we were able to actually build a parking garage, uh, in San Francisco downtown, there's no space. So there is no, uh, patient parking provided in some of the clinics out there in mission Bay. We, it's a newly developed area, as you probably know, around the Warrior Stadium. Mm -hmm. So uh, actually there were a couple of UCSFs down there, Genentech's down there, they already had a parking lot that we were able to contract with and make that work. Okay. So again, we found ways to make it work where we can. It, and it, it just typically, um, the distance of parking to your to the clinics, I mean, do, is it, can you give me an, an understanding of what a typical distance is? I'm not sure I understand. Well, okay, so uh, 
I think in this in this situation, we're. I mean, there's we have, there's street parking. Obviously, we know that there there is some street parking, limited, um, and then there's lots. There are lots, and in terms of the, the your current Locust Street location, you have a lot that's right across the street um, from that location, um, and in, in this proposed location, there's not a, a garage that's within that same proximity. So I'm just curious in your other, I mean, obviously in in areas where it's not urban, where like in Scotts Valley, you have parking that's right there. Um, but in more of what you consider urban, how, what is the distance from your, like where you, the majority of parking may take place to where the clinic is located? So um, relating like to like, so I'd probably relate this to uh, the San Francisco location, for example. Um, it's varied, right? It, because it's it's street parking, it's uh, garage parking that's available a few blocks away. Just like in this case, is would be a, a block and a half, maybe two blocks away from the current Locust Street location. So it'd be probably about two, two and a half blocks away from the parking lot you're referring to that's across the street from Locust. And then there's another parking lot down the ways um, going east, north, mm -hmm. um, from 110 Cooper that has another parking lot there where I've parked. Um, so it, it, it really does vary. So it's a bit of a difficult question to answer. That's why I was asking you. Yeah, I just was I, I was just trying to get a, a feel for, you know, proximity. Um, I, I, I really appreciate, like, the video visits because, I mean, I, I, I use those myself. But... Um, Regardless of having the video visits, you, you still are proposing to, to build 25. Um, I mean, or how many? What 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 is the what's the total number of um, of of rooms or sure. not rooms, but exam room? Yeah, exam rooms. So I think I, we base it off of providers because that's what's the constraint, right? That's who sees you. So it's 13 providers. I think it was misquoted as 17 earlier, but it's it's 13 providers in the application. Okay. Um, and compare that to six that are currently now in downtown in the local lo location. Okay. Um, did I, okay, so, oh, six in the current location? Okay, got it. Um, okay. And could I add Understood. one more piece? Um, I think the other piece to, to consider is we talked about, I think Bob talked a little bit about visits, the number of visits that are coming in uh, to, to sort of calculate what the net impact would be on, on the roads. Um, by our calculations, and no disrespect, but we do this for a living, by our calculations, it's 42, up to 42 visits an hour, but that's certainly the peak. You wouldn't see 42 visits rotating hour after hour after hour. Again, you take into account video visits, telephone visits, Dr. Orndorff talked about that. I might have to retire then. Um, so just based off of that, we provided the top end, um, because that's what we felt that the application called for. Uh, but that's certainly not going to be 42 across the board, and that's what you're going to see every hour after hour. Okay. Thank you. That's, yeah, um, thanks. And <coughs> along those lines, I was also wondering about um, kind of precedent in other urban office spaces um, in terms of the mixed use within the building and experience you may have had, you know, co coexisting with other types of, of businesses in buildings? So we've, um, in Watsonville, right? It's, it's, it's not vertical, it's horizontal, but uh, within that area, we coexist with other tenants. Uh, in Scotts Valley, we have coexisted with other tenants because um, those buildings ha did have other tenants in them and, and still do. And, you know, uh, one of the buildings we're gonna be in the downstairs is gonna be a, uh, a lab. Um, a processing lab. Um, so we have coexisted with other tenants in other buildings. Um, so this is not this is not new for us. And that's why I said, you know, if it were new, the way we would approach it would be a little bit different. We, you know, our, our intent is to be collaborative and we want to be collaborative. We want to find path forward. Um, and we've tried our level best, believe me, we have, uh, but we just haven't been able to make it work. Um, so, you know, what I'd say is it's, I can negotiate with you if you have a position other than no, right? If your position is just no, I, there's no middle ground. There's nothing to, f like there's no place to find. So um, that that's unfortunately 
where we felt that the, that's the position we got into. Um, yeah, well, I guess, and along those lines, if any of these kinds of issues around, uh, and given that your primary care facility um, sort of experiences that other cohabiting <laughs> tenants or co you know coexisting tenants um, have had with your facilities, if there have been kind of similar issues that have arisen um, or how that's worked out, you know, these kinds of different uses. And no, nothing that comes to mind. We've got several buildings in San Jose where we coexist with others, uh -huh. um, and we work it out. We okay. work it out. Uh, again, it, it's you can you can work out anything other than no. Right? So as long as there's a position to work from, we'll work it out. Any other qu questions from the commission for the applicant? Seeing none, thank you very much. Appreciate, Appreciate it. Thank your you. information. And with that, this is a public hearing. And I would like to invite members of the public who uh, uh, would like to speak to the commission to please line up over here. We'll ask that you sign in and uh, address the commission. You'll have three minutes. Welcome. Thank you for coming. Hi. Um, Thank you for having this uh, event. Um, my name is Doug Erickson. I've been here for 40 years or so. Uh, and love Kaiser, what they've done for the community in terms of philanthropy and donations in the Kaiser arena. Uh, my brother-in-law uh, is about to retire uh, at 70 years old as a doctor at Kaiser. Great health care, everything. Putting two, I have two objections. One, um, the gentleman from Kaiser said, uh, for San Francisco, there's no public parking. Massive public parking garage right across the street. That's where I park when I go up there for my parents or f friends. And the Oakland is the same thing. They put in a new parking structure, massive, really works well. You walk across the street, you're in the parking structure. We don't have that here. Um, so the number one issue is parking. And while I ride a jump bike or walk from the west side to here four times a week, easily, don't use my car. I know that when I go to the doctor, and I go to Dignity, at least for now, and I, I schedule appointments, uh, annual checkup, um, why does my shoulder blade feel broken? Oh, it's cracked. Um, why, you know, all the, uh, why do I feel so sick? And every time I schedule it, I go in there, I have to drive in because I'm hurt. Because uh, the last time was I had the Asian flu. I'm not gonna get on a public bus, I'm sorry. I'm not gonna go out in public unless I have to. I'm gonna go directly to where I have to see them. And in this case, dignity on the west side, and I'm there. So I just think that the Rec the um, the thinking behind, you know, people are going to use public transportation when they're not feeling well. When they, it, it's just it's just not it's ludicrous actually. So anyway, thank you. Thank you. Welcome. And could you please introduce yourself? I failed to ask that. Thank you for doing that. Sure. My name is Francisco Piva. Um, for full transparency, I work in the building at 110 Cooper Street. Um, I oppose Kaiser's plan to move into the building for two main reasons, both of which were already stated tonight. Uh, the first one is parking. Uh, parking is impacted in the closest nearest parking garage on Front Street. Um, I don't, as Doug said earlier before me, every time I visit the doctor, I always drive there. I never ride my bike. I don't walk. Um, even when I live close to my provider, I still drive. Um, just on my way over here, as I exited the building, there were signs on the parking meter saying that Cooper Street is going to be closed tomorrow for a special event. This happens numerous times throughout the years. Um, and the, uh, the second reason why I oppose this plan is um, I don't think it fits with the atmosphere of 
uh, 110 Cooper Street. It's a lot of retail. You have the Ma. Um, would I, I feel it would take away from businesses and retail units that operate within that space. Thank you for taking the time to listen to me. Thank you for coming. Good evening. My name's uh, Chris Kodiga, a 50 plus year resident of Santa Cruz. Um, so if we just uh, talk about the elephant in the room, which is the parking and the access, uh, it's very interesting when you uh, look at uh, Kaiser's proposed project on Soquel Avenue, it's 150,000 square feet and they're uh, proposing to build a 700, uh, a four story 700 parking stall parking garage across from it. So if you take that proportion of 21,000 divided by 150,000 square feet, you get about a little over 14 and a half percent. So that would mean they'd need 101 spots. Okay. So um, just to go real quickly, if you look at PAMP on Mission Street, um, they have eight, 80 dedicated parking spots plus four disabled, uh, Cooper House zero, large patient drop off and pick up spot in front of the main entrance. Cooper House will not have that. Um, has good access for ambulances, medical providers, and paramedics. The Cooper House has difficult access for emergency providers. Um, PAMP on Mission Street is a uh, single user, multi user downtown. Cooper Street and Pacific Avenue are there, it's a high tech entertainment community, which is uh, Abbott Square and retail hub of Santa Cruz. Cooper Street is closed on many afternoons and evenings during the weeks. Um, also, just to go through this, is that, you know, Kaiser just started their search on, uh, in January of 18. It takes a while. I mean, a lot of sites have gone by in that time. Uh, there was possibly they could have taken the uh, Santa Cruz County Bank site on Front Street, uh, where Sports Authority went out of business. They could have taken that. So sometimes things don't come up right away. So I just think it's an incompatible use. I'm not against having a medical facility. But the truth of the matter is this is that uh, most elderly patients who are a majority of the people who go to the doctor, they're driven to their appointments by family or friends. So there's gonna be double parking, there's gonna be everything, and that is a fact. And people are gonna be looking for parking, there's not gonna be any parking. Um, so um, the issue is, as Kaiser says, that product ops has said no to them. Well. Sounds to me that, you know, one of the first things that came out of that they said was that, you know, they want to relocate product ops. So they want to come in the building and relocate product ops for themselves. If they're doing a, a virtual business, then why do they need to be right downtown in such a big facility? Most urban centers, uh, uh, medical centers have valet parking or parking structures right across. I, you should require them to have a parking study. And Watsonville and Santa and uh, Scotts Valley facilities have dedicated parking. So I just think, you know, it's it's going to impact the area greatly. We've put all this time and energy in Abbott Square, Thank you. and now we're changing the whole uh, the whole area. Thank you for your comment. Thank you. Is there anyone else who'd like to address the commission at this time? We welcome your comments. If you are interested, please, uh, it would be helpful if you'd line up and. Uh, prepare for that. We are very interested in what you have to say. Good evening, commissioners. Thanks for your service. My name is Reuben Hellick. I'm with Cushman and Wakefield. We're a commercial real estate services group. I work for the J. Paul Company. They own the building downtown. Uh, I, I guess I'll make it as quickly as I can. The, the, the fear of the unknown is legendary. Uh, I do know this, that Kaiser, they're experts, and they also uh, must serve their members properly. In other words, members that are not going to be able to access the, the proper wellness health care at facility, that's going to be a big problem. They're very bright. They've studied this. And uh, just as a local example, down in Watsonville, there was a lot of concern about Kaiser at the 20,000 foot location, albeit it is a different model. It's a strip center. Uh, it's worked out quite nicely. Uh, the tenants are doing great, business is better. Uh, when you get into the parking uh, discussion, it's a pretty sticky widget. There's a lot of overlap, a lot of duplicity. 
uh, wellness uh, appointments might end up in uh, stores or uh, restaurants or the rest. So I, I would just caution you to get too worked up about the unknown because the reality is they're spending a lot of time and money to do this. The property owner, Jay Paul, a uh, very capable, uh, long in the tooth real estate developer and owner. They know a lot about how to run buildings. They have uh, over 7 million square feet and building more. They're really a wonderful uh, asset to this community, having them here as a stakeholder owning property. And they've given this a great deal of consideration. So uh, I must say the staff report I thought was uh, very fair and proper. So again, the fear of the unknown, uh, it's normal and you hear it all the time up here. I just wanted to remind you, here's yet another iteration. Uh, thank you. Thank you for your comments. Is there anyone else who would like to address the commission at this time? Seeing none, I will close the public hearing and return to the commission. Yes, I'm willing to start. All right. Um, I want to appreciate the uh, testimony from the applicant as well as the appellant. Um, let me ask a procedural question. Mm -hmm. Is there not a, requ a requirement in the public hearing to give the appellant a chance to rebut or? You know, I was, uh, yes, there is an opportunity to rebut by both the applicant and the appellant. Um, and we should do that now. Well, I'll hold my comments until Great. that is completed. Thank you for that. I've been uh, scratching through the bylaws. So um, I would like to invite first the applicant and then the appellant to rebut. Uh, I meant the appellant first. I'm so sorry. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I usually jot uh, down order before. I don't know if it's much as a, a rebuttal or not, but um, the issue isn't about Kaiser or how great a company they are or how great Jay Paul is. They're both wonderful. I mean, I, I don't have a bad thing to say about either of them. The issue is if you look very closely at what this area looks like, you've got a, a couple of one-way streets at the end of it. It's about 100 yards long, and you're going to put, no matter what the number is, no matter how much we argue about the specifics, it's a lot of traffic that isn't there now. And the reason they're picking this building is because we don't have any other real estate at the time they picked it. Now, there's two other places that are going to be available three if you count with the Lawler project, but you've got part of the Galleria, you've got UTC. If we got really creative, they should be in the CVS location as far as I'm concerned. That has all the parking you want. CVS is the number one crime place in town. The police are called there more than any other place. It would be perfect for them to be there. And I don't have, I, I, I couldn't get the data in time, but anecdotally, the only other place similar to this as opposed to San Francisco and Oakland and San Jose is Pasadena, and they had a four-story building there. Kaiser moved into an existing place. All the other tenants left, and Kaiser took the rest of the building. And that's the issue that, for me, is like I'm, I, and it's not a, <laughs> I'm trapped. I'm in a, I'm in a lease, and, I, you know, to say I was a position of no is not true. It ended up being no, but I asked my team, and they said, look, we like looking at the trees. We don't want to look at the air conditioner units on top of the other buildings the management person that would be responsible for the TIs for the next seven or eight months is in charge of business development. So he would have to stop and go supervise this, which harms my business. So this isn't about the unknown. These are knowns. They, they, none of this is questioning you know, what it is. It's a change in the venue. It's a change in, in a significant amount of traffic. Everybody's talked about parking endlessly. There's not much there. So. It's a land use issue. I don't know that I would consider Santa Cruz quite as urban as I would San Francisco and Oakland. That's my rebuttal. Thank you. Thank you very much. And would the applicant like to provide a rebuttal at this time? Thought you while I was sitting there and I thought about your question a little bit more about urban areas. Um, and then for some reason I just locked into Northern California, but uh, Bob brought up Southern California, so we are in other areas. Washington, D.C. is a classic example. Um, we're in a building that has no parking. It's co-located with the Securities and Exchange Commission. So when you talk about security, right, you got SEC attorneys with probably some of the highest, most sensitive information, business information. We share the building with them. Um, in that building are is urgent care 24-7. 
um, it's got pediatrics, specialty care, primary care. Again, a different cohort of folks coming there, uh, a sicker cohort than what we would expect at this clinic. Um, I think that the question was brought up about our project, uh, the, the 160,000 square feet uh, that we're looking to develop up in Live Oak area. Um, the parking that is associated with that is actually driven a lot by the rules and regulations that we're required to develop and because we're able to develop, we are developing it. And it's a specialty care building. It's not a primary care building. So the type of patients coming there are different. So I just wanna put that color out there a little bit. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, with that, we will return to the commission. Thank you. Uh, and thank, again, I want to thank everybody for their testimony. Uh, the, the, the last comment that really stayed in my mind was that, was the reminder that this really is a land use issue. And that's, you know, it comes down to what, for me, what's appropriate land use in the downtown. And it's a parking district. What we know about a parking, what I know about a parking district is that uh, it's the city's responsibility to provide adequate parking. And the city, uh, all the uses in the downtown uh, are chipping in to assist in paying for that parking. But the notion that there's a parking problem, which there may be, what that would lead to if that's what drove decisions is that there could be no more development in the downtown area. And yet, I think the city council and this commission has talked about the need for a variety of uses in the downtown. Uh, they're all gonna have parking demands. Most of them are not gonna be able to provide sufficient parking. And anybody who, who follows city politics knows that one of the hottest issues right now is around whether we need another parking garage or not. Um, and there are people who say we don't, even though there may be a lot of demand because people should get out of their cars and ride, bus, ride the bus or ride the bike. So I think, um, I don't see the, the, the parking issue as uh, a, a, a good justification for not approving this project. I also think I, I've had, a, uh, when reading over the staff report, reading over the letters, listening to the testimony, it's like, again, the purpose of the downtown is to bring people into the downtown. That's what the whole purpose of the downtown plan is. Uh, and it was helpful to me to get a better sense of what kind of a clinic it's going to be because um, I'm not a Kaiser patient, but when PAMF was downtown, I used to go to the PAMF clinic, and it was a regular clinic, and I would ride my bike there. I would end up doing other things in the downtown uh, while I was downtown. And I think there, you know, I think one of the things we talk about uh, in terms of parking demand is shared parking. And I think that the, the notion of people coming, uh, coming to the clinic, then going and, and doing something else downtown, I think is very likely to happen. There will be people who that's not the case for. People who are really sick will get their prescription and go to CVS or get somebody to go to CVS and go home but a lot of people will end up being downtown. And I'm thinking about um, the Abbott Square and the impact that it might have on Abbott Square. And I guess I disagree with the testimony that it would be uh, detrimental to Abbott Square. From my perspective, it could be very helpful to Abbott Square. There are a number of businesses that have gone into, restaurants that have gone in that have closed because there are uh, insufficient numbers of customers. And I remember I participated a little bit in the planning for Abbott Square. And one of the central issues was, how are we gonna bring people into the downtown? That was, and they have all sorts of events to try to do that. And from, from my perspective, having a wellness clinic next door um, could very well uh, be a positive, uh, have a positive effect on the uh, downtown. So I, uh, I'm willing to support the staff recommendation. I thought the staff report was well done and uh, provided an explanation. Yes, there could be problems with pull-up parking on uh, Cooper Street. We'll have to see. There are days when it's closed. I think the idea that you know people walk, people walk from parking garages to their to the clinics as well, and some of these parking garages and. and 
facilities, probably a far further away than the parking garages downtown. Um, I don't deny that parking is a problem, um, but my sense is that it's the city's responsibility if parking is uh, parking demand is sufficient to de to demand additional parking spaces, then the city should be providing those parking spaces. Um, so those are my comments. Okay, great. Uh, I am Thank willing you. to support the staff recommendation. Thank you. Um, I'm. Uh, I completely believe that um, a clinic or a medical clinic should be downtown. Um, I do have. I, I. I. But I do have some issues with with this particular location uh, in this application. Um, I think the park, the parking. I mean, it's. Um, I understand the the parking from the parking count um, situation, and the and the idea is that we're, is is from a uh, from the city's perspective. You know, the, you know, we're we're trying to bring uh, as many people downtown as we can. If that means building more parking structures, that's what we do. Um, and you know that's that's part of what these fees that go into the parking district are for is to to build those uh, structures um, and to also maintain them. Um, the one of the concerns I have about this particular location is the is the distance in the proximity of parking, of large amounts of parking that that can make it to um, this location. Um, I, I think the uh, the fact that Cooper Street is um, really part of the, it's, I see less of a street and more of a square. I mean, it's part of Abbott Square. I mean, and, and as, as it was stated t today um, by testimony that it does, get, it gets shut down multiple times in the year. Um, and I think that, that that's just gonna create additional issues with access. Now I do um, what, you know, in terms of, uh, Ruben's statement, um, I, 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 I totally agree. I think Kaiser um, is certainly thinking these things through uh, for their own business. I think um, they don't want to create something that's, uh, that, they're, that their clients are not going to be happy with or not their clients are not going to go to. Um, so I, I believe that they're putting in the effort and I, I believe that they really think that this is a, a good location for them. Um, but I don't necessarily think that from my perspective, I don't think it's the right location for the city to have the clinic. I, I think, um, and, and like I said to start, I think having a clinic downtown is a great idea. I think, um, you know, driving more traffic or driving more, you know, getting more people downtown is great. It's gonna, it will help uh, enliven the city. Um, but those, but but that is the 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 um, the access and the proximity of parking to that is is an issue for me. I think um, the other, I think traffic um, in a way is, I, I think that is potentially a problem just at this location. Like if it was, if, if, this, if, uh, if this application was at the Galleria um, or you know, it, you know, somewhere else uh, that, that was even, nearby, but just kind of pushed off to the side a little bit uh, where it wasn't affecting Cooper Street because I just think Cooper Street is a, is a difficult street as it is. It's a very tight street. I, it's, it's, um, and, it, and I think it's difficult to navigate um, for somebody that's in the event of uh, vehicles dropping off um, patients uh, to go to the, you know, they get dropped off at the front door. It, the only way, and I, and I think the only way it works is, is you have to come from Pacific Avenue and turn on Cooper Street to, to drop someone off at Cooper and coming the other direction from front, then you're across the street. And, and I just, and, and because it's only a two lane street, I, I have concerns that, um, that, that it's gonna be, it's gonna cause congestion there. Um, so, So I think from, from my perspective, um, I'm, I'm not in support of the application. I don't know exactly how to say it with the appeal piece, but, um, uh, but that, that's, my, that's, that's where I'm sitting right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Did he come in? Is he looking good? Okay. Um, so yes, thank you very much for the testimony on both sides. And this is a this is a challenging um, decision before us. Um, and I hear what my fellow commissioners are saying, and also really respect what they have to say. Um, and I think that um, I uh, believe that you know, as commissioners, we're trying to think about planning for the downtown in relation to the city as a whole, uh, in relation to the region. Um, and I am um, really sympathetic to the idea that, you know, this issue of traffic, thinking about that in terms of the street, the neighborhood surrounding this proposed clinic, as well as, um, you know, what would otherwise be generated um, as a result of building it elsewhere. Um, and as somebody who's a member of PAMF and thinking about how fortunate I felt when the downtown facility was built, I live on the west side, um, and then I could go to the west side or I could go to the downtown, and when I have to go to the main clinic, you know, it can be an hour, you know, for me in terms of commuting to get to that clinic depending on the time of day. Um, and that we should, you know, think about the, the value of the density that we have in the downtown, invest in that density, consider the fact that we have, um, you know, a parking district there, I think it's likely we'll need, um, in addition to, you know, more efficient transit, which can be generated by having more density, um, we will have to have more parking um, in some fashion, whether it's, you know, building up in the Trader Joe's parking lot or whatever it's gonna be, but there needs to be in that region, you know, potentially in the future, more, more parking, but that's something um, I think as, Commissioner Schifrin was saying that this kind of a, a need would, would generate. Um, I'm sympathetic to the point that there might be other adjacent or nearby sites um, that would, you know, in the in the near term um, be be uh, be easier to to absorb. At the same time, I uh, hear what, what folks are saying in terms of the studies that have been done. Uh, the efforts that have been made to find other other sites, um, and the fact that this is um, a primary care versus an urgent care, which the West Side, you know, site for PAMP is, and so forth, and the different kind of parking required for that kind of a site, um, is also you know something that has um, helped me to think about this. Uh, so it's it's perhaps more likely that people will be traveling via other means, given the fact that a good proportion of folks are not going to be uh, dealing with, with urgent needs. Um, and so uh, I, and finally I would say, um, the idea of kind of multiplier effects for businesses locally, and the idea that having a lot of folks who are not simply working there and going out for lunch, but coming at different times of the day to use, you know, to potentially visit the Ma and the, and the businesses in, in Abbott Square uh, and the retail uh, on, on Pacific could likely have a beneficial, you know, economic effect for the downtown. Um, so for all of those reasons, um, uh, while I realize these are gonna be ongoing conversations around, around parking, um, I would support this proposal. Thank you. Um, I, uh, I would also like to thank everybody for coming um, and for thinking about this carefully and also for making it very clear that downtown has a parking problem. <laughs> um, I'm not sure if it was completely clear before. Um, and But also I want to just say it does seem like we are as a community really embracing Kaiser and seeing the benefits that they bring to our community. I'm not a Kaiser member myself, but the, um, I know that it's it's very highly valued, and um, people where I work were very excited when it became an option locally. Um, I, I think for me, um, in recognizing the complexity of using a downtown um, site like this, it's not easy. It's going to require very active problem solving, um, but it is a very vital community need. Um, and we can see that by how quickly Kaiser outgrew their existing site on Locust Street, which is pretty tiny. Um, but, you know, coming into there was um, was very welcome. The number of people who are who can walk 
um, in order to go to the doctor. That I hear that all the time. That people, that it's just something that is is really really appreciated. Um, and it, you know, adding, you know, doubling in size is certainly going to have uh, some impact. Um, I also support this project at this site. I think it's not perfect. I think that um, in trying to provide the kind of vital downtown area that we need, um, it's not going to be perfect. And what's going to come out of an imperfect situation is more creative solutions. Um, a site like this downtown doesn't consider parking in the same way. It's not going to be the same as um, a, any as a facility anywhere else, um, anywhere in either the city or the county or most areas outside of downtown Watsonville. And it's because of the unique natures of downtown. Um, what I hope is that uh, there can be a really active engagement of trying to find a way to work as well as can be done into our downtown because we love our downtown. That's one thing that I get here is we all love our downtown. Um, and I appreciate all of the businesses. I certainly appreciate the perspective of, of um, the appellant. Um, I also am in support of the application. And I would, um, at this time, if there's more comments, um, you're welcome to make them. I'd just like to make a couple of uh, more comments. Okay. One has to do with the drop off. Um, most of us probably spend a lot of time downtown. I know I do. And I actually spend a lot of time in Abbott Square. And it seems to me that the, we've talked as if the only drop off would be on Cooper Street. But in fact, letting people off on uh, Pacific, letting people off on Front um, would not be that unusual. It's a half a block, it's, mm -hmm. it's a half of a small block away. The other um, issue that I wanted to mention is that since this is a land use issue, it isn't our responsibility to be talking about other sites, I don't think. The question is, does the application meet the requirements of the general plan? Does it meet the requirements of the zoning ordinance? Um, looking towards a staff report to make that um, case, if that's the recommendation, I think in this particular situation they have met the case. Whether there might be a better site, whether there's something else could have been done elsewhere, that's really not before us. What's before us is this project, does it meet the requirements of the city's regulatory system? And I think it does. Therefore, I would like to move that uh, we approve the staff recommendation denying the appeal and uh, uh, supporting the z uh, zoning administrator's approval of the project. I hear a second. A second. It's been moved and seconded. Is there further discussion? Can I? I'm sorry. Um, I, could, could I just get a little bit of clarification? Mm -hmm. um, are you proposing to move um, with the conditions approved by the zoning administrator or the um, the mo proposed modified conditions by staff? It's the proposed modified yeah. conditions. Yeah. Thank you for clarifying that. I was thinking that as you were speaking. Is that clear to everybody? That's the mo that's okay. the uh, that's re what was request the before the recommendation, recommendation before us tonight. So I was moving right. that recommendation. Okay. Could we have a roll call vote, please? Commissioner Schifrin? Aye. Conway? Aye. Nielsen? No. Greenberg? Aye. With that, the appeal is denied. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Um, you might want to explain the, appellate, the appeal procedure if they want. Uh, it's the, uh, I, I think that he can. Okay. I, I'm sorry, I wasn't on my toes on that. <coughs> sure he'll figure it out. <laughs> sure, he sure he knows. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, oh. They all, I mean, it's not what really is about. Yeah. I mean, it is interesting that. And we do thank you all for coming, and we welcome our vibrant community conversations. We're not quite done with our meeting. And if you could carry them outside, we would appreciate that.
So Ryan, I think we'll be looking for you to help us com conclude. Or is uh, which of you is going to be staying as serving as staff as we conclude the meeting? Um, we're looking for information items. Nobody. Okay. Um, I'm seeing no information items. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, no, no, by no means. You're very welcome to stay. It's just that we prefer to. Com and I see our planning director <laughs> timely entering the chambers. Did you have any information items? Yes. Thank you. Good afternoon, planning commissioners. Lee Butler, the planning director. I just wanted to give you all a heads up that on the next council meeting, August 13th, we will be discussing uh, the, uh, the council retreat that happened uh, Saturday the 22nd of June, I believe it was. Um, and um, one of the things that we'll be talking about is priorities for um, our advanced planning division's work plan. So you may want to tune into that. You may want to take, take a look at the staff report that will be available next Thursday. Could I ask a question? Um, at one of our earlier meetings, it was mentioned that the, um, the item on the corridor study, con consistency between the general plan and zoning ordinance, would be coming to the commission in August. Is that no longer the case? That is not the case at this point. What we did at the, um, <clears throat> at the council retreat was kind of a straw poll um, because we've got uh, many things on our advanced planning work plan and um, uh, many things in the queue that we haven't um, even brought forward. Um, and all of them are important. <laughs> um, they can really make a difference in the community. They can improve the quality of life and or improve the environment and so forth. And so um, as part of that straw poll, the, the council did not prioritize that item. Um, so it's still on our list, um, but what we're uh, attempting to do at this um, next meeting with the council is really to have them um, bless our next six months. Um, we, have, um, uh, we have some preliminary feedback but it, it really was just kind of a on the spot straw poll. And we also have a number of items where council gave specific timelines of when to report back on things. And so we've put those into, uh, we will be putting them into a calendar for the council to consider. And um, we'll say if, if you want to move some things forward earlier, that's fine. Here are the implications in terms of pushing other items back. Um, so that's, that's part of the exercise since the uh, uh, council is going to have this meeting before our next meeting, uh, would it be possible for staff to send the commissioners a copy of the staff report? So if any commissioners had some concerns about issues, they could go to the council meeting without having to track it down on the, their, their probably long agenda. Sure. Yeah, we can we can let you all know that uh, when it's available it'll be posted next Thursday and we'll let you know what item number it is and send a link. It's okay, uh, thank you. easy to do. Thank you. Thank you all. Okay. Anything? Nothing else? That was upcoming it. items. We, okay. We've had, uh, you know, the council was off in July, so no other reports from council at this point. Thank you and, for coming over. Um, there are uh, a few other things on the council agenda, but that's uh, sort of one that's certainly of interest. Um, there'll be um, also the rental housing data collection. Mm -hmm. Um, is coming before them. Something that you saw, the High Street, 517 High Street, that street vacation will be on the agenda. Okay. Um, and um, uh, those, are, those are the things that are okay. relevant to your Is there a heads up on upcoming commission agendas? The next uh, commission meeting is the uh, 15th, and that will have 190 Westcliff. That is the um, parking lot across from the Dream Inn. And um, there will also be a, um, a reappointment of the new ad hoc subcommittee for uh, the planning commissioners who uh, attend the community meetings. Um, that, just so you're aware, um, we have not forgotten about the, uh, the clarifications that you all have requested. Um, we um, have that report ready. 
given the length of the various agendas at the council meetings, um, that hasn't been presented. We currently have it slated for the second meeting in August, so we are expecting some feedback from the council very soon. Um, it's been an agenda management thing with, uh, as you've likely seen, um, meetings going from 10 in the morning till late in the evenings, and so um, that is, it, it hasn't been forgotten, and we'll get that back to you. Great, thank you. Anybody have any questions? I don't have a question, I have a statement. I will be absent um, for the August 15th meeting. So. Okay. As will I. Okay. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, and thanks for coming over. Um, are there subcommittee advisory body oral reports? None at this time. With that, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.